Let's talk about the markets in three minutes. Calm. We see calm in front of us, which makes a change uh, for the better, probably for many people, for the worse, if you'd like that volatility, um, uh, a change from last Monday. What does the calm tell us about how we're positioned for a really busy week? Yeah, good morning, Anna. I've been pretty surprised by the price action, uh, I think, into the end of last week about quite how positively we traded. And I say that as someone who is remains very bullish. I've been bullish all year. I remain bullish in the year end. I'm, I don't think that we've had a sudden big turning point in markets. I think recession fears are overblown. Uh, but I do think that we're still going to get more volatility in August. And I don't think we should be misled by the CAM today. Specifically, the CAM in Asia session was a little little bit exaggerated by the fact that Japan was on a holiday. And remember, Japan was the epicenter of the recent problems. And so there, it's, therefore, it's a slightly misleading session. So I think this year, week we can expect some more volatility, probably volatility of the downside skew. And I say that being very bullish. I'm still worried that we kind of head back towards the recent lows at some point, And because we've got some big data points at the later end of the week. What are you watching out for? You've got UK data this week, you've got US data this week. Mark, what is, what is top of mind right now and how does it relate to the individual asset classes? Let's, let's talk about UK data and UK assets. So the UK has got a lot of data this week and I think it's an interesting story. Um, I think that the UK story is, is, is relatively positive at the moment in terms that we've got uh, uh, a little bit of political stability, the recent, obviously, riots and unrest, uh, you know, not gnawing those. But overall, from the top, we've got some political stability. We've got some kind of pro-growth trajectory. And I think that UK generally, we've been getting more optimistic on all year. We see that in the growth forecast. Uh, so I think that there's upside for the pound, though I think people got over their heels on that one or, you know, that, that, a little bit um, extended positioning wise, which is why you've had a recent retracement. But I think the structural story is positive. I think for you, UK equities, there's also a positive tailwind. My one worry is that I do think the Bank of England, and we see that with the report that came out via the FT this morning, that I do think the Bank of England will stay quite hawkish and won't be in a rush to cut. However, that's a global theme. It's not just the Bank of England, but they might be at the forefront of disappointing investors in those cuts that are priced, priced almost all mm. around the world. Yes, and, and thinking about the other data points we have this week, of course, CPI, US CPI in focus. What would you expect the reaction function in Treasury markets to be to the to the uh, to the CPI data, Mark? Yeah, in line with my views on the Bank of England and UK yields, I do think there's an asymmetric risk of yields uh, going much higher on a beat in CPI with this week than going lower on a disappointment, and that's because we are pricing in an aggressive amount of rate cuts in the US that just won't be delivered unless we suddenly go into a recession. And that recession is not looking very imminent. Sure, there is a slowdown in the labor market, but finally, belatedly, we're still adding jobs, remember. This is not a collapsing labor market. Atlantic GDP now forecasts are 2.9%. This is not an economy in recession.